Welcome to another Focus on a Species video. This is Scout, and she is a Ural Owl. This is a species found native to Northern Europe and as far east as Japan. Now the Latin name is Strix Uralensis. The Strix part of that name refers to the genus the owl is in, which is actually the most common type of owl genus. And in that respect, she kind of fits in between a tawny owl and something like a great grey owl, because they're in the same genus and visually her appearance and size would put her into that kind of area. So she is a bit like a slightly larger and slightly more arctic tawny owl, as they do live in the northern tundra where it is much much colder, and that's why they have all these feathers to keep them nice and warm. In its really cold weather they tighten their feathers up to trap in the air, and if it's a warm day they can loosen their feathers up, shake them about a bit and let the air fly through. Now of course she is an owl and therefore she's got fantastic hearing and I think she's heard something in the tree just up here and she's having a good look at it. And they do have very good eyesight, they have more cones in the eye than we do and this gives them the ability to zoom in on things much further away than we can. They have also got a very wide peripheral vision as well, however their hearing is the key feature like on all owls. However, when it comes to owl species, the larger the face, the better the hearing is likely to be. They have asymmetrical ears, so one ear is actually slightly higher than the other, and the other one is upside down. This really aids the triangulation of the sound source. But also, the face itself works a bit like a satellite dish. It absorbs the sound and channels it into the ears on either side of the eyes. It's this face and the different grey markings that give the Ural Owl the beautiful look that they have. The Ural Owl has a wingspan of about 110 centimetres and they weigh about two pounds. So they're quite light for what is a reasonably large species of owl, but it is all the feathers that give them that larger look, of course. They are nocturnal, so they predominantly hunt at night for small mammals like voles and mice and rats. Their feet are big enough to easily catch prey as large as a small rabbit or a pigeon, though they do mostly catch those rodents. Breeding occurs during the summer months, with the female laying around four eggs, incubation of those eggs for about four weeks, and then the young hatch, and they're usually fledging by around six weeks old, so it's a very quick growth. Now, although owls don't create nests, they sometimes steal nests from other birds or find a suitable place within trees. And this arboreal species prefers evergreens with a dense canopy. This is not only useful for hiding from possible predators, but also the young fledglings find it very useful when they're practicing flying, as it works as a safety net when they make mistakes. By 12 weeks old, the down is pretty much all gone, and they are a fully feathered adult bird, and they're going to go out and find their own place to hunt and survive, and they do pair for life. Owls are monogamous. Now, when predators do spot the Ural Owl, they will practice mobbing to deter those predators. This is the form of flying around and mildly attacking, bouncing off the predators that are nearby, and they're quite aggressive when they do it because they are very territorial and want to protect their home, but also their young. Now, I've had Scout here since she was about two weeks old and have hand-reared her myself. Their use in falconry is a little bit limited. Owls aren't any good for hunting, and when it comes to display work, the Strix genus is a little less reliable, especially when it comes to mobile work, not so bad in a bird of prey centre where the birds will fly every day, perhaps in the same venue. Now, in my opinion, the Ural Owl here is actually a bit easier to train and more reliable than, say, a Great Grey Owl or an Asian Brown Wood Owl or something else in the Strix genus, perhaps. Although they do have a bit of a clumsy tendency, they can break their soft feathers quite easily, and they're not, for those reasons, a commonly seen bird in display work, even though they're not the rarest type of owl in captivity. Now I'm very pleased to say that their classification in the wild is least concern. 
However, it's really important that we monitor the number of ural owls there are in the wild as their habitats are changing, there are risks from poison in food and things like that. And we want to see a species like this thrive for many, many years and centuries to come. The Ural Owl really is a fantastic example of a beautiful bird of prey with amazing hunting abilities and such a unique look.